Hi guys, XX Redstone for all here. And in this tutorial, we're actually going to take a break from building our ALU. And we're going to go over what registers we're going to use. And yeah, so. When we're actually going to put the registers in, I'm going to use World Edit to paste them. Uh, but you viewers won't know how to build the registers. And I'm not going to go over the time of building the registers in with the ALU and in the CPU and all that. So this video, I'm basically just going to show you how to build the registers. And then in the next video, we're going to incorporate them into the CPU. Okay. So let's go over to fresh plot here. And this is my own custom very compact um, RAM that I came up with and yeah so first thing put two blocks on the ground repeater um, on the first block and uh, redstone coming out this is the output which is on the ground build a block there so you've got a diagonal and this here so that when this is powered it'll come out the output then, build up four blocks, actually five blocks, and then destroy that one, place a sticky piston. Now destroy that block, and destroy that block. Uh, so, if you put something through, it'll come out the output, unless the piston is extended, because that'll cut off the flow. Now, what you're going to do is run a line past here, and run this across, and put one there. So, this will do is when, so this is right, and this is data. So when I put in data, here, um, I need to move it over because I don't want it to activate the right every time. Nothing will happen because I'm not writing anything. And if I just use the right, nothing will happen because I'm inputting a zero and that will still be zero. <coughs> well, actually, no, I need to add a torch here. <coughs> so that first I need to extend it so that it's kept down. So that when I send something through here, zero comes out because zero is written. Now if I input a one, and I write it. It should come up, so now when I send something through here, it'll come out the output and display 1. And now, even if I turn this off, it'll still be there, because it's RAM. It remembered. Alright, um, and then write a 0. Back in. And we're going to get ready to stack this. So, I'm going to remove the torch for stacking. And I'm going to go right here. Put position one and position two. And we're just going to add repeaters. On so let let me just map out the parts. These inputs here, this is the data. This is what you're sending in. This line going across right here, this is the right. And that, well, I've already said that. But, and then, these are the outputs. And then, if you connect all of these up, then this will be the right. Or, sorry, the read. We already have a right. Okay, so first things first. Hmm. No, not yet. Okay. Um. And now I will just put position one here. Uh, 
Oh, one very important thing. Place blocks on top of this. It won't do anything to the functionality right now, but when we stack it that way, it will do a whole lot. All right, and now slash slash stack like three. So since we have eight in each, this is four bytes. And now place the torches that you had here. The reason we didn't stack it with them is because then it would invert every time and that's not what you want. You only want it to invert once. So place these torches. And if you want to stack this further, um, I prefer to repeat it at the beginning because, I don't know, just preference. You can repeat it at any part. But what I'm going to do is just put repeaters here. And then place blocks here. And the reason this still works is because bud switches work from above and from diagonal. So if the repeater here is messing up the bud switch, it's powering this, which is still the diagonal, and the bud switch still works. Um, okay. We have this, and now what we need to do is we just need to activate the rights so that all of these extend down and stay down. So they should all be down. And there. Okay, so this is four bytes. <coughs> and since our ALU is 8-bit, um, it works perfectly because 8 bits in a byte. And yeah, but what we're actually going to have in our CPU is we're going to have 8 registers, so 8 bytes on each each side so what we're gonna have to do is like copy this and then paste it one more and that'll be eight just to give you um, a, a visual well not really I can actually give you a visual over here okay so you'll recognize under all this busing part of our ALU right here, you see the adder, and hopefully you can see the subtract function, it's kind of hard to see, the, yeah, um, and then on either side of this mound of busing here are the registers, so, yeah, that's what it's gonna look like in the final product, um, yeah, so, back to the RAM. I, t to my knowledge, this is the smallest RAM that has ever been, crea been created in Minecraft. Now, since it's 1.5, people could probably make smaller RAM. But if, they're, if you're not using, if you don't have 1.5 yet for some reason, or if you're on the Xbox, this has no glowstone logic, so it works. And yeah, um, although. You wouldn't be able to build the CPU on Xbox because it has a lot of glowstone logic. Oh well. And the adder. Um, but so it's probably not the smallest anymore. But my custom designed RAM at least was the smallest RAM ever in Minecraft. Um, just saying. Because, you know, I'm a bragger and I like to brag. It's just me, you know? Um, okay, yeah, so basic demonstration is when when you'd be using this like if you wanted to do 7 plus 3 plus 9 I don't know uh, which would equal 19 you you uh, do 7 plus 3 with our adders and you'd get out 10 which is 1010 zero, one zero. and then you'd send that 10 to the registers and you'd save it save it to whatever cell you'd like and then you read that 10 out into the ALU with a 9 and you add them together 
and you get 19, which is the correct answer. So that's how you do long equations with the CPU, and that's why it's better than just, you know, like a normal ALU. Um, so this, this is all I'm really going over in this video. So I hope you enjoyed, and see you in the next video.